Making Science with Sarah. We're going to be making balloon thermometers with these awesome fifth graders of Harmony School of Innovation. And we say, Good, good morning, morning, San Antonio! We'll be right back. <laughs> Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. <laughs> that was great. Good Love morning, it. everybody. It is Wednesday, February 8th. Thanks for joining us. We'll check in with those lucky fifth graders in a minute. But I could see that Sarah is wearing appropriate earrings. They're clouds because we had some rain this morning. Let's look out there with live cam. And let's go outside right now, see how things are looking out there. We're waiting for things to start to clear up. But in the meantime, it's been a sloppy morning commute, Justin. It has. We had light rain most of yesterday afternoon and then overnight. We had some showers and storms. And now we're getting some pretty heavy stuff moving through San Antonio. But this is the last of it once this moves through. We'll get some clearing later this afternoon, but we've got to look at this uh, area of rain right here in southern San Antonio. This is uh, pretty heavy rain, in fact, moving right in there over Mitchell Lake and coming in right along 410 there on the uh, city south side. So Palo Alto College, we are about to let me get back to uh, our home here. It looks like we uh, jumped around, but Palo Alto College, you're about to get some pretty heavy rain. And we'll try this again one more time. Uh, with this uh, batch of showers and even thunderstorms. We're seeing a few lightning strikes with this. Not a lot, but some. So we know that this is uh, going to be some pretty heavy rain as it does move north. And uh, tracks there right along 410, and this will eventually work its way towards downtown as it is racing off to the north. I mean, these things are moving pretty quickly, so that's why the rainfall totals haven't been terribly high. But uh, good to see the rain nonetheless. We're closing in on about half an inch, four tenths of an inch at the airport with uh, this latest rainfall. We'll put a track on this and we'll say it's moving about uh, maybe 16, 20 miles per hour or so. And so just to give you some ideas here, uh, Harlandale High School, 911, Highland Park, 19, uh, 917, as you get into Southtown, about 920 or so. So this is going to be coming through pretty soon, this uh, heavier rain. And expect, again, some lightning strikes with this. Uh, here and there as it uh, does move off to the north. We can actually count the lightning strikes here right now at about six. So that's not a huge number, uh, but uh, we're seeing other thunderstorms and other downpours here on the city's north side. They're along 281 and 1604 uh, just to the east of uh, 281 near Madison High School. Some heavier rain mixed in there. So this is going to cause some problems on the roadways as Stephen will tell you here in just a second. Uh, but I think a lot of this does begin to move out next couple of hours. And once this back edge moves through, uh, then we'll get the chance to uh, clear a little bit. Very quickly, uh, we'll take a look at the temperatures and go outside for you. Still some rain coming down. You can actually see a bit of clearing there off in the distance. 47. It's chilly on top of being wet with northerly winds at 13 miles per hour. And we'll have those rain chances through about noontime, 51. Then the sun pops out. We'll get some warmer readings this afternoon up around 61 with uh, I'd say mostly sunny skies, but still some breezy winds this evening. It goes clear and we'll have a warm day tomorrow, but more active weather heads our way. We're going to talk all about that seven day forecast here in just a few minutes. Let's get over to Steven now and talk roads. How are they looking right now? Uh, wet. Uh, <laughs> that's what we're seeing out there, Justin. 1604, let's get a quick look at the commute. So, uh, you know, obviously we see a lot of those droplets on the Transguide camera. It's been like that uh, since you rolled into the station this morning, so just prepare for a wet drive even if you're just leaving the house right now. Certain areas we're seeing a traffic dwindle down, other spots like 410 at Fredericksburg, still a little bit of a few slowdowns and actually we do have a few issues to get to, so let's get you here up to I-10 over uh, uh, near Burn stage road. Those eastbound lanes, we have detected a crash in that area that is slowing traffic down just a bit, but looks like that could be clearing soon. I'll keep a close eye on that, but I do want to get your attention back down here uh, to 410 westbound at McCullough Avenue. A new crash was popped up there and you can see it's causing a bit of a slowdown for drivers, but also in the eastbound lanes, we're seeing that slowdown as well. So as I mentioned, wet roads is really what you can expect right now. If you plan to head out the door in the next few moments, just make sure that you drive safe. Uh, other areas like 10 at Camp Bullis don't look too bad, but still uh, safe to assume that the roads are going to be wet when you leave your house. So just remember to drive safe and we'll get you updated uh, throughout the newscast on any incidents that may pop up. Guys. Stephen, thank you. And by the way, it's practically a city holiday. Today is Stephen's birthday. Uh, happy <laughs> happy birthday. birthday. Thank Stephen. you very much. I appreciate that. Well, <laughs> comp day for everybody. Oh, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at today's night at nine. 
progress and resilience. There were some of the key points President Biden highlighted during his second State of the Union address in front of a joint session of Congress last night. He urged Congress to work with him to finish the job on a host of issues, including tackling inflation and building back the American middle class. But his speech sparked some tense moments in the chamber with several outbursts from Republicans on issues like Medicare and Social Security. Dramatic images of rescues in the rubble after the historic earthquake on the Turkey-Syria border. The death toll continues to rise, now at more than 11,000 people. Thousands more are still feared trapped. This morning, American search and rescue teams arriving in Turkey to join the search for survivors. Seven additional Memphis police officers are expected to be disciplined in connection to the death of Tyree Nichols. Five of the officers are already charged with second-degree murder, among other charges. According to the New York Times, one of those officers admitted he took a photo of Nichols after the beating and sent it to several people. The man accused of opening fire at a Walmart in El Paso back in 2019 is expected to plead guilty in federal court tomorrow. Patrick Crucius is facing 90 federal charges. 23 people were killed and nearly two dozen others were hurt. Federal prosecutors have said they would not seek the death penalty. That case is set to go to trial next year. Crucius could still face the death penalty if convicted of capital murder in state court. Texas is suing new federal guidance focused on abortion medication. The policy states pharmacies that receive Medicare and Medicaid funds cannot turn away people who have prescriptions for drugs that may end a pregnancy. The federal lawsuit argues the policy violates the Constitution, claiming it forces pharmacies to carry abortion drugs in states where abortion is banned. U.S. and European cybersecurity officials are warning about a new global ransomware campaign. At least 3,800 IP addresses have been impacted. It's not clear how many actual organizations that might be. The attackers are exploiting a vulnerability in widely used software. Officials don't know yet the extent the ransomware disrupts operations at the victim organization. Oil giant BP said it pulled in a record $28 billion in profits last year. The company also said it is slowing down its plans to cut back on carbon emissions and oil and gas output. BP had planned to lower sales by 40% by 2030, but is now aiming for a 25% cut. Honda is recalling thousands of vehicles over a backup camera display that may not work when the vehicle's in reverse. The recall involves 2018 to 2020 Fit hatchbacks and 2019 to 2022 HRV SUVs. The automaker is asking owners of the affected vehicles to bring them to a dealership for a software update. Honda will contact owners by mail beginning in mid-March. LeBron James has broken the NBA all-time scoring record. He passes Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's 1984 record while playing against the Oklahoma City Thunder last night. James finished the night with 38 points, bringing his career score to a total of 38,390 points, three more than Abdul-Jabbar's record. And that's today's 9 at 9. In your morning headlines, a WNBA star making history, and a man from Maine prepares to make his 57th straight Super Bowl. But first, new details in the case of the man who police say was involved in stealing two monkeys from the Dallas Zoo. Our Tiffany Huetas joins us with the very latest. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All eyes on that developing story. Now, the 24-year-old man allegedly admitted to the crime and says he will do it again. Damien Irvin faces charges stemming from a string of suspicious activities at the Dallas Zoo. On January 13th, Irvin allegedly entered the Dallas Zoo and cut the fenced enclosure for the clouded snow leopard. Irvin told investigators he petted the animal before he got away. Now, the leopard was found on zoo property later that day. Then on January 30th, two monkeys were stolen from the zoo and later found at a vacant home that Irvin said to frequently visit. Finally, on February 2nd, Dallas World Aquarium employees say Irvin was asking about the monkeys at that location. They called police and he was taken into custody. Now he faces six counts of animal cruelty and two counts of burglary to a building. WNBA star Candace Parker will make history as the first woman to call an NBA All-Star game. Parker, who recently signed with the Las Vegas Aces, will be part of the broadcast in Salt Lake City, Utah. She will be the first woman to work as an in-game color commentator for an NBA All-Star game. The 36-year-old has won two WNBA titles. The All-Star game will be held on February 19th. 
and a man from Maine who never misses the Super Bowl is getting ready to attend this year's game. He's heading west for his 57th straight Super Bowl. 86 year old Don Chrisman is excited to see Sunday's game. The Kansas City Chiefs versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Now he is a diehard Patriots fan, but is going to the big game and it's a tradition. I, I keep saying I'm going to give up, but then I get this. There's something inside that says you got to go. This is a game ball from Super Bowl 51, the overtime game. Chrisman hopes to go to the game with his daughter this weekend. Now, firefighters in Pennsylvania get a very unusual call. A mom needing help because her daughter's head was stuck in a cake pan. Firefighters in Mifflin County responded to the call Monday. They used tin snips to cut the pan in two places, allowing them to get the girl's head out. Now, the two year old is fine. Her mom thanked firefighters for doing such a great job. She wore it kind of like a shawl around her shoulders until the fireman got there. She was a trooper. <laughs> she was still able to eat and drink while she had this tin around her. The girl's mom joked that this kind of thing runs in the family. She says when she was a child, she got her legs stuck in a plastic chair. Incredible work from the firefighters there. And my daughter is just learning how to walk. So I'm just like in that. <sighs> Let's see what happens. I mean, she's a very, right. you know, you know, she's good right now. But when she starts walking, you already know they're they're going to go everywhere. Yeah, so. that's how it happens. <laughs> you're you're yep. on alert at all times. Always. <laughs> we both have been there. All right, Tiffany, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good to see you right now. 909, 46 degrees still ahead on GMSA at nine. The latest on the Spurs trade with the Miami Heat and a look ahead to tonight's game. Plus how residents near Candy Lake are coming together to help each other clean up uh, all those branches after last week's winter storm. And we're going to be checking in with our Sarah Spivey very soon. <laughs> and also David Sears, they're playing around with that balloon. That's part of their experiment today. They're at the Harmony School of Innovation. Night 13, major cleanup continues after last week's winter storm rolled through parts of our area, hitting areas very hard, especially north of Loop 1604. One of the hardest hit neighborhoods is in the New Braunfels area near Canyon Lake. And as RJ Marcus tells us, there's a community led effort there to clean up the mess left behind. Emmanuel Valdez is making the first of many trips to this neighborhood park to drop off branches and tree limbs that fell because of last week's storms. I've been here about five, six years now. This is the worst I've ever seen it as far as uh, uh, the, the damage. Valdez lives in the Vintage Oak subdivision off Highway 46, just south of Canyon Lake. He says last week, the entire neighborhood was covered with ice. You could just come out here and listen, and you'll hear branches just crunching and crashing. And, and, and so it's been pretty crazy the last, last week or so. Valdez is part of a group of neighbors that teamed up to collect the branches and limbs left behind. Depending on the weather, it's been, uh, been uh, a little bit of work, as you can see, uh, with, with all the debris around here. And just check out all the trees and brush that these neighbors in the Vintage Oaks neighborhood have been dealing with over the past couple of days. They're almost as tall as the umbrella that I'm standing under right now. What they're doing is collecting these from div individual driveways, and they were later be burned as part of a controlled burn in this area. Jim Beeman has lived in Vintage Oaks for years. His company helped organize this cleanup effort by providing trucks and equipment. $90,000 in resources, vehicles, skid steer, trailers, and just to come together, you know, as a family here in this community um, due to the devastation that was going on. But the work is far from done. The subdivision has hundreds of homes that still need clearing. The brush pile is probably three football fields large. We'll be find the resources again this weekend as well to catch up. My neighbors have some of those big, beautiful trees that you kind of see in this park, and it's like devastating. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. It's going to take a long time. My, you know, my brother lives in Austin and he came down over the weekend to tell us that, I mean, luckily he only lost electricity for one day, but we didn't realize how many trees he had. I mean, because they were actually just like all yeah. down. It's you far know. worse than we could ever imagine yes. from, what, from what I'm hearing. Yes. It's, it's going to go down in record books as one of the, uh, the bigger ice storms we've ever seen around here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the damage, it's, it's going to be there for a while. Uh, hopefully the cleanup cleanup goes well. And I yeah. saw that Weather Service was even tweaking how much ice accumulations we actually had last week. Some of it was yeah. thicker than we thought. Yeah, I think so, especially up north. Mm -hmm. You go north of Comal County, there was some pretty big numbers west of Austin. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was it was significant. There's no doubt about it. Now we're, we're dealing with the other side of things, thunderstorms, yes. more spring-like out there. 
and uh, we've got some pretty good rain coming through San Antonio right now. This is that same cell we showed you earlier that was there in South San Antonio. Now it's starting to work into downtown and eastern parts of San Antonio. So let's zoom in a little bit closer and show you exactly what neighborhoods uh, this heavy rain is affecting. And notice it's moving quick. I mean, this is moving fast. We're not going to get a ton of rain. There's not going to be flooding or anything like that. But if you're underneath where you see some of these reds and purples, that is some pretty heavy rainfall. Uh, so yeah, just east of downtown, east of the Alamo Dome, uh, we're getting some good rain right now. This is uh, this will add up quickly. There's the AT&T Center there. So some good rain coming down at that spot. And then you go north of uh, to along I-35. That's near the Splashtown area, starting to see uh, some good rain there. And then where uh, 35 meets Loop 410. I've seen some good rain. Just heard it. some yep. thunder here at the station. So we know there's some uh, electricity with these storms. And Kirby, next in line to see some of this. Wagner High School, you're getting some very heavy rain. And this stretches down to uh, Martinez. As uh, we go further south, that still kind of stretches down here into the southeast side along I-37. It's pretty heavy rain there. But yes, we just heard a clap of thunder here. And uh, we know that some of that heavy rain is moving right in around downtown at this hour, probably with a couple lightning strikes mixed in there. You know, let's pause it. That'll give us a little better look at what we're dealing with here when it comes to these neighborhoods. But right over downtown, and yeah, there's a lightning strike right there just uh, west of downtown. Uh, that, that's probably what we heard as uh, this batch moves through. Should last about five to 10 minutes and then it'll be on its way. But this is just adding to our rainfall totals that we have right now. We'll go up to uh, the Memorial High School area, seeing more heavy rain there. Little pocket. This will make its way up across Culebra into the Jefferson High School area. You'll get some rain. I think most of San Antonio is going to get at least a little bit of rain out of this. That heavier pocket that was up there around the Stone Oak area has now moved into Kamau County, and this is working its way up into the Smithson Valley and Canyon Lake area where we'll get some more rain. Now, beyond this, uh, there's not going to be much. I think once this passes by, this is kind of the last little line here that will move east. We'll say goodbye to the rain and it'll move out. I'll put it back into motion here, but you can see everything's kind of racing off to the north and east pretty quickly. And this is uh, this is pretty much the last of it. As uh, we look at rainfall totals, and I, I just tried to update these. Obviously, they're going to go up a little bit more with some rain moving through. But the airport was closing in on four tenths of an inch. New Braunfels about half an inch. Comfort, one of the big winners, 0.77. Molten got over an inch, but that was about the only place I could find that had some bigger numbers. So. Man, it wasn't as much rain as we had hoped, but at least it was widespread here around San Antonio. Toyota plant almost half an inch there, Alamo Ranch. Get the idea. I would say it's anywhere from three tenths to about six tenths of an inch with this rainfall. Outside right now, we've got rain coming down 47. North northwesterly winds at 12. Those winds are fairly breezy. We'll see cloudy skies, chance of rain through noon, and then clearing out 61 degrees at 4 o'clock with mostly sunny skies into tonight. Temperatures will fall off quickly into the 50s, and it starts off pretty chilly tomorrow morning. Here's the big picture. And uh, this system is moving east and northeast now. Even a little bit of snow on the back side of this. In our forecast, again, by noontime, most of this is starting to move out. Then by 3, 4 o'clock, sun is out. And we'll get some sun uh, for most of the afternoon and into uh, dinner time. Very quickly, I want to take you forward in time. We're going to get another system that comes through. This brings a cold front tomorrow evening, brings some windy and cooler conditions for Friday and Saturday. Saturday should be sunny. It'll be a nice day. Sunday, we get some increasing clouds as another system moves in. Things are getting kind of busy here. And this is a system that may bring us some thunderstorms as we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week. Something to watch. Uh, we could get maybe some heavy rain in spots. We'll see. And then that'll move along on uh, Tuesday after the north and east. So 70 tomorrow, sunny, but then turning cooler on Friday. I think Friday, the big story there will be the gusty winds. Gusts to 35 miles per hour. It'll be a very chilly morning, too. Down near a freezing Saturday morning, more clouds on Sunday, 67 Monday. And there's that chance of storms as we head into Valentine's Day. Uh, next week. So the uh, pattern has gotten busier. We like that. We like the rain and uh, good to see some showers still working through San Antonio again. That will wind down here soon. We like that except the cold mornings. Wow, especially Saturday morning. Well, it is still February, but yeah, sure. it's down to 31. A light freeze possible.
it, you had amazing timing. You you mentioned storms, and then it thunders within 30 to 60 seconds. Right there. It was good. You know, Mother Nature just... <laughs> in sync. We in try. sync. We try. 920, 47 degrees. Finding work after life in the military can be difficult, but one agency is helping veterans transition a little smoother. In the next half hour, Courtney Friedman will tell us more about the training being offered, and it's not just for veterans. And Dave and Sarah out at Harmony School of Innovation working on balloons with fifth graders. It's a thermometer experiment you'll want to see coming up. 924 time for another science with Sarah and this morning. Sarah Spivey and her assistant David Sears are out at Harmony School of Innovation. They're going to be making balloon thermometers with some fifth graders there. Good morning, guys. Hey, good morning. Yes, David. Um, it's been full of hot air all day long, I think. Here. Wow. <laughs> Today we are going to be making balloon thermometers. It's right. a great way to Oop. show how... Oh, he's got to get his glasses on. Safety first. There you go. I guess I should put mine on yeah, too. Yeah, put your goggles on because this is going to be uh, fun. There they are. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to show how warm air expands and cold air contracts, right? Okay. Here's the materials you need. You need a water bottle. You need a balloon. You need that water bottle to be about half full. You need hot water and you need an ice bath. So the first thing you're going to do, stretch out your balloon a little bit, blow it up. Wait, hold on, I'm not done stretching. My All right, try not to break it. All right, these fifth graders have been having fun with these noises all day long. <laughs> all right. What we're doing? Then what you're going to do, this David? Was the noise experiment. Go ahead and place your deflated balloon over the top of that water bottle and try okay. not to break it because you want a really tight seal there. Okay. All right, that got looks it. good. How's okay, that? we're going to put it in this bowl. I've got some hot water here, David, and okay. I'm going to pour you some pour hot it. water on the side. Now, what we should Be see careful. is we should see the balloon. Inflate. Whoa. Whoa! There we go. That's so cool, right? Yeah. Next, what we're going to do, David, is we're going to put this in the ice bath. Now, this one might take a little bit more time, but what you should see is you should see the balloon start to deflate a little bit. Okay. Can I do this one? Yeah, you can do that one. Oh, look, and that balloon just went down. See? Look into that balloon. Hot water. Look at that. Look at that. Whoa! Look at that. <laughs> this science experiment really shows how we get weather with warm air rising and expanding and then contracting and forming clouds when it gets up in the cooler part of the atmosphere. You guys ready to do this experiment? Yeah! yeah. yeah. How excited are y'all? Really excited. Yeah, yeah. okay. Excited. Well, coming up after the break, these awesome fifth graders at Harmony School no, of wait. Innovation it just deflated. are going to really inflate their scientific knowledge. We'll have that experiment coming up in a bit. <laughs> that was good, Sarah. Welcome back, everyone. Let me tell you, we picked a great day to study about the weather because we have a thunderstorm going on right now. Let's see what hot water does to these balloon thermometers. You ready? Is this yours? Yeah? All right, let's see. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Whoa! Okay, why don't you grab that right there and put it in the ice bath. Let's try Stir yours. It Stir it in the ice bath. Stir it. All right. It's cold faster. Okay, now watch what happens. Nice, gonna happen. it worked. It's gonna... Uh -huh. It's gonna deflate. It's gonna deflate? All right, let's see what happens. It might take a little longer. Again, the colder water takes longer. Stop. Wow. That must have been really hot water. Yeah. Why don't you holler when it starts okay, to deflate? Okay, when it starts to deflate, I'll okay. be back. Well, that was fast, wasn't it? Did that work? Yes. There. Okay, here we go. Here oh, we my. Go. Is it a really oh, hard? It's what? deflating. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, pretty neat. Look at it go. It's going. It's deflating. Oh, no. It lost all its emotion. It doesn't have emotion. My favorite subject is now science. <laughs> Your favorite subject is now science? It's been science. Well, yeah. The trip to your school worked. It's been science. It's been science. What do you think? I love science. I love science. It's so, deflating. So, Describe the whole process. So we grab we grab some water, nor just the sunny water. Uh -huh. Sponsor me, please. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> we grab it. We put some hot water into a bowl, some ice water into another bowl, with some a balloon on the sunny water bottle. It's some, with some water in it, some air, some water in it, and then we put it in the hot water and it inflated, and then we stirred it in the ice water and it inflated. It lost it. 
all into motion. Why did the balloon inflate when we put the hot water on it? Be Got it? Because, uh, <laughs> I'm getting water right now. Hot, hot air expands and cold air shrinks stuff. I've been accused of that once or twice, hot air expands. That's why I'm bigger than y'all. There's in the plate. There's in the plate? No. All right, we'll try again. Try. You guys want to try this experiment? Okay, let's That's try over here. That's part of the experiments. See if it works. Here we go. Whose thermometer is this? Look at that. Yours? Whoa. Whoa. All right, now stick that in the cold water. See what happens. <laughs> Look at that. Now what are you going to do with that? Put it in the cold water. Let's see what happens. Stir it around a little bit. So, so all the water in there gets cold. Here you go. Stir it up. You, go ahead. Okay, you do the same thing. Is this your thermometer? Yes. Okay, let's see what the hot water does. Keep stirring. There you go. Now, stir, what was stir, your stir. hypothesis? Stir, stir. My hypothesis, I think the one with the cold water will be easier to pop. So what? So what was that? A correct hypothesis? Hmm. Well, seems like. I don't Seems like the hot water made it, right? Yeah. But is it okay that our hypothesis is wrong? Yes. Absolutely. That's what science is. So way to go. That was awesome. Good job. <laughs> okay, right it right over. So did yours did yours expand already? Yes, it did. So you're taking it so it already deflated? Yes. Even before you put it in the hot water? No, nope. I just put it in the cold water and it deflated. And it deflated really fast? Kind what of. happened there? Um, the cold water made the balloon contract. Very That's exactly good. it. That's right. You guys got this down. All right. So what, what did you guys yours? think about this experiment? Have you put yours in the, in the, in the cold water yet? Uh, well, yeah, I have. You put it in the cold water, so you put it back in the warm water, so you can get it to go back up. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, let's see. All righty, everyone. In order to celebrate, let's go ahead and take the balloons off of our thermometer. Be very careful with the hot water and blow up your balloon as, as much as you can. Go ahead and do that. I'll, I'll join you guys. Take your balloon that you had alpha on the side. Okay, when I say three, two, one, we're gonna let our balloons go completely, ready? Three, two, one, woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, for more science with Sarah experiments, you can go to ksat.com. Way to go, everyone. Give yourselves a round of applause. Back to you guys. Yeah, back. Back. Yeah, back. 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 yeah you, you go. Fair is fair. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of fun there, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. More on static cling next week. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So much fun. Especially when they let all the balloons go. That was cute. That was awesome. Uh, guys, we're looking outside right now. We've got some showers and storms still over San Antonio, and you just heard from Sarah there. They've got some thunderstorms where they are. That's cool there on the northeast side, right underneath some of this heavy rain you see here. We've had pockets of heavy rain moving north and east through town. Right now, centered over Windcrest shirts uh, towards the Garden Ridge area. Uh, there could be a little bit of small hail mixed in here, although we have not had any reports of that. If we did, it would be very small. It wouldn't be a big deal. Mostly, this is just a rain event. And I'll zoom in a little bit closer around Converse. You're getting some good rain right now over there around Randolph, up to Shirts. That's where the uh, pocket of heaviest rain is right now, Live Oak. And then as you get up into the uh, 35, uh, north along 35 here, north of, northeast of Selma, nice little pocket of good rain there. Also, 281 and 1604, we've got another good pocket of heavy rain. I'll zoom, on, uh, zoom in a little bit closer here, and it's right where that interchange is, and then just off to the east, where we've got uh, some of that purple color showing up, which tells me there is some torrential rain probably coming down there with this particular shower storm. Again, we've had a few uh, lightning strikes associated with this. And what we can do is look at the uh, rain rates and uh, give you an idea of just how heavy this rain is. So where you see that purple color, rainfall rates are on the order of about four inches per hour. So if this were to sit there for an hour, you'd pick up four inches of rain. Obviously it's not, but uh, it's coming down heavy enough where there may be some ponding on the roadways, may get some brief high water before this moves right along. Let's put it back to radar and uh, get more of a big picture here uh, about what's going on. And we'll zoom out 
and to show you uh, the movement on this activity and we'll clear that off. Uh, let's see if we can get it cleared. There we go. We got a bit of an update there with the radar but we'll put it in motion and you can see everything now is moving off to the north and east pretty quickly. And it looks like it's weakening just a little bit too. So most of San Antonio now is uh, going to be in the clear and uh, we'll start to see some clearing a little bit later this afternoon. Still a few light showers back behind that, but the heaviest stuff starting to move out. So the forecast for today, Rain early, but then uh, tapering off 51 at noontime. Still cloudy, maybe a few lingering showers. Sun pops out this afternoon. We're up to 61 with mostly sunny skies and breezy winds out of the northwest at 15 miles per hour. We'll take another look at radar coming up here in just a bit. Get you set for your weekend at 2 and talk about some more rain chances down the line. That's coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you. We've got a lot of water on the roads. There's one camera. Uh, let's see if it pops up here in a second. If not, maybe you guys can dial it up. 35 at Evans. Looked like there was water over the access road. We are getting a report of high water northbound 410 at Ben's Eagleman. We also have at least five disabled or stalled vehicles. And there's the water yes. that I'm seeing right now. Let's see, it's covering up the stripes on the road, especially the uh, solid white stripe. 35 at Evans Road. Uh, that water is going to take a little while to dissipate. Is somebody actually going to come through there right now? Yeah, wow. looks like uh -oh. it. So. Uh, maybe it's not as bad as it appears from this elevated angle. But again, all this, as Justin said, eventually going to start to move out. Yeah, it's not as bad from this viewpoint now. But uh, we'll keep an eye on things, and things should improve by this evening's commute. Be careful out there. Life after the military can be a tough transition, but an agency called Empower Texas is offering training, job skills, and job placement for free. And it's not just for veterans, it's also for military spouses and at-risk young adults. Courtney Friedman explains how the program started in Dallas and will open here in San Antonio in March. Paul Rodriguez served 14 years in the Army, and when he transitioned out, he was overwhelmed with what to do next. I've always been fascinated with IT, information technology, and computers. He found a free program called Empower Texas, where students begin with a 16-week tech fundamentals course which takes people from no IT experience to a digital career. And all of our students have an opportunity to earn up to five industry recognized certifications. Empower Texas Executive Director Jonathan Pride, a veteran himself, says they then offer a professional development program. Their resumes are rewritten, they do mock interviewing, they do speed networking and mentoring, and then they are interviewed. Once I complete the program, uh, Empower is able to place me with a uh, software company, which is where I'm currently employed. Rodriguez is grateful the free program is also for military spouses like his wife. Since this program is moving here, I'm encouraging her to look into it. Rodriguez went through the program in Dallas and got his tech job in San Antonio, where USAA has just granted the company money to expand to Military City USA. With that expansion comes the addition of non-military students, specifically young adults 18 to 26 from underserved communities. When people are making, you know, sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars a year, and that's public assistance and Coming out of our program, they're making $60,000. As an emerging tech hub, a military city, and a growing community, San Antonio is the perfect place for them to launch March 26th. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And classes are filling fast, so if you want to register for the upcoming classes or to see if you qualify, you can head on over to npower.org. Right now, it's 940, 47 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We are continuing to celebrate Black History Month by sharing the history of the city's first integrated nightclub. Jesse Deguiato explains the renewed interest in its history after the break. Welcome back. A special events venue known for its outdoor Lucha Libre matches could be getting a historical marker. The building used to be the Keyhole Club, which was the city's first integrated nightclub. And some of the headliners were the most famous names in jazz and rhythm and blues. Yeah, we've got some great pictures back here. A lot going on here. A lot of people having a great time. The club was originally over on the east side in the mid-1940s before closing down in the 1960s on the west side. Jesse de Goyado tells us about the renewed interest in its history. No doubt screening her short film for the first time about the legendary Keyhole Club was exciting. Growing up, I never heard of African-American stories on the West Side. But to actually be where it once was? I'm inside the Keyhole Club. I'm inside my history. It's amazing. Yeah, it's gorgeous. When I walked in, like I got goosebumps. Oscar Cassiano says she's not the only one. They start going, you know, where they get chills just walking in here. 
Twinney says visitors realize this is the place their parents had told them about, where Deal Grant's parents and many others had come to enjoy the biggest names in jazz, like Nat King Cole and Duke Ellington, on what was then called the Chitlin Circuit. The owners even welcoming whites and Latinos was upheld by the Texas Supreme Court when the city tried to shut it down in the early 50s. They did not want people mixing together. No. Wow. No. Oh my God. What remains of the neon sign of San Antonio's first integrated nightclub is now being donated to the San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum. SACAM also will work on a historical marker for the building Cassiano has tried to maintain. What he and his family have done here is incredible. Preserving clues to its storied past. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Look out there with live cam. A chillier day today, 47 degrees, and you can see like the leftover rain there on our camera lens. Uh, it's been kind of a wet morning. You can also see that off in the distance, it looks like it wants to try to brighten up just a bit. It wants to, it wants to. It's, it's going to take a little more time. We'll get the rain out of here, then it'll take a couple more hours to get the clouds out of here, then the sun pops out. He just told us we had to wait. Gotta That's wait. That's okay. That's Gotta okay. be patient. That's okay. Uh, but tomorrow, tomorrow's beautiful. Tomorrow, a lot of sun, and it'll be really comfortable as far as temperatures go. Let's get back to the radar, because this really has been kind of the, the main story this morning, right? Following these showers and heavier downpours that have been working through San Antonio. They're almost out of here. They're working their way up along I-35 now. So New Braunfels, you're now getting some of that heavier rain uh, that has pushed through San Antonio here over the last hour. And these are moving at a good clip, so they don't sit anywhere for any good length of time, but uh, where you do get some of these heavier downpours, you may pick up a quick quarter of an inch of rain, which uh, certainly isn't bad. We've been adding to our totals throughout the morning and the airport uh, closing in on half an inch, which is good. Uh, this is New Braunfels, just west of New Braunfels, west side of the city. You're seeing some of that heavier rain moving in. And of course the radar is right here, so it's kind of a weird view, but uh, yeah, there is that uh, storm that is working through uh, New Braunfels, there could be a few lightning strikes here. We'll go ahead and pause it. Uh, but uh, where you see some of these uh, darker reds, that's where some of the heavier rain is. They're just south of FM 1863. They're uh, on the west side of New Braunfels, and we just updated, so the heavy rain is quickly moving north. And that's kind of how things are going now. This is moving up towards the green area, and uh, we'll continue to see uh, these uh, pop-up showers and storms here around New Braunfels for another I'd say 30 minutes or so. If you're living in San Antonio, the, the rain, the heavy rain is for the most part done. Uh, we're still, still seeing a few showers on the back side of this, but nothing that was heavy like the activity that just moved through. A couple more showers and maybe a few lightning strikes developing here south of Pleasanton. That'll work probably just to the east of the city of Pleasanton, just based on the current trajectory. But Floresville, you may get some rain out of that. We've also got some uh, showers and storms uh, across our far eastern counties. Howitzville's dealt uh, with a few uh, downpours this morning. And again, we'll have a few more before this is all said and done and we say goodbye to the rain. Uh, there's the scene outside. It has certainly been a wet morning and temperatures sitting at 47. It's chilly too. I mean, this is jacket and umbrella weather for sure. Northwesterly winds at 10 miles per hour and a look at the forecast for today. 48 degrees at 11 o'clock, 30% chance of rain, 20% chance at noon. Still cloudy, but I think the sun tries to pop out thereafter. 59 at 3 o'clock, 61 at 4 o'clock. We'll call it mostly sunny and winds will be a little bit breezy. Tonight we slip into the 50s, eventually down into the 40s, I think by tomorrow morning. So it'll be chilly to start your Thursday. Here's a look at the forecast. And it does show that by noontime, showers are quickly moving east. Still can see a few pop-up thunderstorms around Gonzales, Aquero, Howitzville. And by 3, 4 o'clock, the whole area is really clearing out at this point. Sun pops out west to east. You'll see that clearing today. And temperatures will briefly make it into the 60s before falling again uh, tonight. We may see a few clouds try to develop tomorrow morning. Shouldn't be a big deal. Now let's look further down the line because we've got more activity headed our way. Uh, that system moves away. Here's our next one. Now this one moves down uh, going into tomorrow night and early Friday. Brings a front through. Turns uh, windy and colder for us. This does not bring any rain. There's no moisture to work with. This last front's going to take it all with it. So this is just uh, a system that 
brings uh, gusty winds and colder temperatures briefly because by Saturday we're starting to warm up again. And then here comes our next storm system right on the heels of that. This is Sunday. We'll get an increase in clouds and then by Monday as this pulls in, I think we have a pretty decent chance of rain at least Monday night into Tuesday. Right now about a 40% chance of some showers and storms. So it's getting a little busier. The pattern is more favorable for rain for us and we love that. That's a that's a good thing. Of course, we've got the rodeo going on, so it'll be uh, kind of dancing around that as far as the rain chances go, but I think all in all it's not so bad. 70 tomorrow's rodeo gets underway and then our front comes through tomorrow evening. I will tell you Friday. Friday is going to be a very windy day. I think we could see some gusts up around 35 miles per hour here in San Antonio. So you combine that with those temperatures in the 30s Friday morning. It's going to be blustery. Only 57 on Friday. 60 Saturday down to 31 Saturday morning. So a light freeze for most of us. Increasing clouds Sunday, but temperatures in the 60s. And then we add in those rain chances. Of course, Valentine's Day Tuesday. Hopefully we can get the rain out of here so everyone can have a, a great date night Tuesday night. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And good for the Super Bowl weekend as well. It looks good. It does. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. San Antonio Spurs completed a trade with the Miami Heat yesterday, acquiring 33-year-old center Dwayne Dedman, a 2028 second-round draft pick, in exchange for cash considerations. Because the NBA requires teams to receive something in return for all trades, the minimum amount of cash the Spurs were required to send the Heat was $110. $1,000. Spurs second game of the rodeo road trip is tonight up in Toronto. Tip off set for 6.30 San Antonio time. And we'll have highlights for you coming up on the night beat at 10 and tomorrow morning on GMSA. Time now is 9.51 and 47 degrees. We'll be right back. Rodeo plants wish there was a just a handle on the back of those vests. Oh yeah, easier, easier to pick them up out of the dirt, right? Yes, I know you want to make sure they're okay. Hey, okay, speaking of tomorrow is the first day of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. That's right. It's going to run through the 26th, and tomorrow on GMSA at nine, our David Sears will be live out on the rodeo grounds to get us ready. Last week we talked with the chief marketing officer for the Stock Show and Rodeo. Tell us what we need to know before heading out there. If you missed that Q and A, don't worry. You can watch the entire thing on KSAT's YouTube channel. He talked about the grounds layout and new parking plus all the amazing entertainers set to play this year, and it is a huge list. And don't forget to check out our rodeo special tomorrow night right here on KSET 12. You can watch it from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. followed by the night beat. And we'll take a look at the radar one last time. Most of the heavy rains moving out of San Antonio, but still some showers trying to work their way back in, especially there in the southern side of the county. A few light showers here and there. I think most of the rain starts to come to an end by lunchtime. We'll see some sun later this afternoon. And again, happy yes. birthday to our Stephen Cavazos and also birthday. Stephanie Jimenez. Happy birthday. Yes, big yes. birthday day, day yes. here at KSED. <laughs> Have a good day, guys.